I want to uh, welcome everybody here and my role as chair of the Kirkcaldy Area Committee is to set the context for uh, this fantastic day, the official opening of the Kirkcaldy Leisure Centre. Uh, the final piece in the jigsaw of a, a significant investment in public money across Fife to improve the health and well-being of our citizens and their visitors. Uh, opened up with the Carnegie Centre, then we've got the Michael Wood Centre, and now we've got the Kirkcaldy people, the dream comes true, we've got the Kirkcaldy Leisure Centre. And I want to mention a few names, um, the people who have been involved in this, because although you know, I chair the Kirkcaldy Area Committee right now, uh, there was a significant number of councillors in the last administration who uh, were significantly influential in this outcome. Uh, I want to mention Alice Soper, who chaired the Kirkcaldy Area Committee the last time round. Uh, the late George Leslie, a great friend who died uh, unfortunately before the place was able to open so he couldn't see this dream come true. David Torrance, who's here, is currently the member of the Scottish Parliament for Kirkcaldy and was a member of our committee. Ron Edwards and uh, Brian Goodall, who chaired the, the, the committee. Uh, all of these people uh, may not be on the area committee just now, but they did play a significant role in bringing the whole thing to fruition. Uh, very much a partnership approach to things. Uh, to set the context of this, um, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the members of the Kirkcaldy Area Committee, um, and it's about a sense of place. The immense pride that I personally got in, in standing, being able to stand here and represent our councillors and the people that we represent in Kirkcaldy area. We're only a hundred yards for the sandy shores of the Firth of Forth. And I want to give you a sense of place about where we're actually at. Uh, there was a, a man called Adam Smith that walked these shores and walked around this town for ten years thinking and jotting down notes to create some of the greatest works that uh, our, our, our current people who have got the greatest brains and greatest thinkers on this planet still refer to it as the work that shapes it all. So right here, right now is probably the beach potentially at that time. And if you think about it, you know, in the middle of the 1700s, this guy, Adam Smith, simple name, two words, but his influence on how people view the world has been immense. So we're here at a pace of absolute history. And it's something that the Kirkcaldy Ambitions Group, who were formed to represent the town and take forward the Gold Town Centre agenda or the back input for people locally, um, it's one of the things that is really important to us to develop in Kirkcaldy, that sense of belonging and what Adam Smith stood for and does stand for over whole lot of years. So right here, right now, you're in his footsteps. Feel how it feels. I'm 58 now and I breathed the oxygen of Kirkcaldy for all of these years. I've never really went away. Uh, looking back over time, um, as an eight-year-old, I'm going to concentrate on sport and health and well-being now. As an eight-year-old at Pathet Primary School, <coughs> I remember Mr. Hutchison who ran the team. Um, and most of the guys that played were like 11-year-olds at that time. 10, 11-year-olds played the football team. And he came to me and said, I'm getting a game at left back. And I was eight. And when I pulled that black and white jersey across my shoulders, my job was to make sure that nobody came down that left side of our football park and got anywhere near the goals. And I had a determination and a fierce sort of a need for achievement on that football pitch because nobody had ever done something like that before for me and said, I'm giving you a chance here. So I battled on that left side of that football team for years and not very many people got past. And not very many people won a 50-50 shot against Neil Crooks, I can tell you. <coughs> but I had determination and pride in what I was trying to do. I also liked swimming. But in Kirkcaldy in the 60s, you had to go to Burnt Island Pool for the open air swim. Sometimes you had to clear the leaves, the sweetie packets, the flies away 
to get into the water. But yeah, we were along there for a swim and we dived in. We also went to Perth for a swim because that was one of the next closest ones. And for people that are here for Dunfermline, yeah, we also went on Tuesday night and a Thursday night to Dunfermline bars for a hot swim because it was hot water, not like the fourth. And as a nine-year-old, I got a badge for Kirkcaldy Amateur Swimming Club and I wore it on my trunks for years because I'd swum in Kirkcaldy Harbour, dived in, went to the poles and back, and that was the recognition you got, a badge that said K-A-S-C, and you wore it proudly. I also took that badge to Butlins umpteen times in one swimming contest for breaststroke swimming, and I got a free holiday for my parents save them money. So you know, when you get recognition, even how small it might be, it can make your chest puff out and you make yourself feel special. And what we've got here now for our young people is an incredible opportunity. Facilities that you know we, we wouldn't even dream about in the 60s. And for generations to come we're going to have Lots of young people and visitors coming here looking at this in splendor and thinking, my goodness, who is it that did this? And it's going to come back to a whole bunch of people with good ideas about investing public money, taxpayers' money, hard to come by money, to create these opportunities for people for life. And I am so proud to take part in this operation today.